when Dad was in the Navy, he had, shall I say, a drinking problem. Let's let's phrase it that way. A drinking problem. At least early his early Navy career. Once he was up to about a... Um, he was in charge of people. He was a supervisor at this point. So he must have been about an E5, E6. He had a sort of a drinking problem, let's say. Okay, so got him in trouble a couple times. He would basically be on shore leave. He only drank during shore leave, by the way. They would do hooch on the ship, but like it was it was frowned upon. He wouldn't do that. But like shore leave, he would get crunk. He wouldn't just get drunk. He'd get crunk. And people get their asses kicked. We'll just put it that way. Sometimes him, sometimes the other person. But So he would be disciplined a couple times. If the shore patrol would catch him, they don't take you to jail. They just take you back to the ship, and then you get, you get disciplined. You get written up and disciplined. This would happen to him various times, right? Here's what you may not be aware of. If you have no knowledge of the military, who do you think is in charge of disciplined people? What position on the ship? What level of officer is in charge of disciplined people? If you don't know anything about the Navy, just take a while, I guess. I'll give you a second to think about it. So what do you think? Who do you think is in charge of disciplining you? Do you think it's the captain of the ship? That would be the natural... Uh, Natural thought, right? The captain of the ship would be the one to you know, enact discipline. Think about a lot of sci-fi shows you've seen. If somebody fucked up, it was probably Captain Kirk that would like issue the judgment, right? I think uh, when Kirk was being tried for something, you know, it may have been. Um, I'm not really well versed in the original series, but it may have been that Captain Pike episode, the two-parter. Kirk was on trial. There was three captains that were on trial for him, right? Battlestar Galactica. It was three captains that put Baltar on trial. It's the captains, right? You would think just like the cap. Now, that's like a different situation. It's like military court, right? So military court's a little bit different. We're not talking about any official discipline. We're talking about in-ship discipline. It doesn't go any further. There's no uh, JAG. You know, no JAGs involved. You don't have representation. You fucked up, and the officers on the ship punish you, okay? That's what we're talking about. Low levels of misdemeanors, essentially. It's essentially misdemeanors. Do you know who, who disciplines you? It's not the captain. It's the XO. The second in command. The really big ships, like the aircraft carriers, it may even be the third in command. But it's the second in command. It's not the captain. Now, one of the reasons why is you don't want the crew pissed off at the captain, You don't, but you don't care if they're pissed off at the XO. That's kind of the XO's job. The XO's job is to be the hard ass, keeps the trains running on time, which means you, you're always chewing people out. You have an adversarial relationship with a lot of people, and you impose judgment upon them. There's another reason why the captain is not in charge of discipline of the crew, which would be, normally you think the captain would be, right? Do you know the other reason why the captain is not in charge of discipline of the crew? Because he's too fucking busy. Do you realize how much shit a fucking captain has to do? He is in charge of everything, man. He delegates, but all those people he delegates to report to him on a daily basis. He's in touch with the shore, or in this case would be the space stations and the planets, right? He's dealing with the bureaucracy. He's in charge of logistics. Like I said, there are people, there's somebody who's in charge of logistics, but that person reports to the captain. He mediates disputes between different officers of the same rank that are beneath him. Two lieutenants have a problem, he's mediating those disputes. He's deciding strategy. Where do we go? What do we do? How do we enact these? These are our orders. How do we enact these orders? How do we enact these orders within the framework of everything else that's happening? Now, sometimes you just follow. You have a ship, the fleet has orders. You have a fleet commander. The fleet commander gives you the orders. You go. He says, go over here. You go over here. The captain still has a lot of decisions. The captain is micromanaging so many things. But he can't micromanage everything. The captain cannot be in charge of everything. He has to delegate certain things and not even worry about them. And I'm not talking about the kind of delegation with like the logistics. Should we take on 6,000 pounds of beef or just 5,000 pounds of beef and give us some extra room for ammunition? He'll make those decisions. But he can't get involved in the petty disputes, the misdemeanors that happen on board the ship. You've got 1,000 crew members. 20 of them are in trouble at any one time. The XO takes care of that. The captain never hears about it unless the, the, the XO goes to him and says, look, we need to get this motherfucker off this ship. And then, you know, the XO t explains the situation. The captain signs the transfer order. That's the only time the captain gets involved. He's not even aware. The captain was never even aware that Dad was a drunk. And that Dad cleaned up his act. You know, he eventually, they, get, they gave him a swinging bus, which means we're going to put this, we're not going to do anything on this file right now. We're going to put it in our desk for six months. If you do anything else, we're going to pull this out, we're going to write you up, and you're going to be demoted. If you don't do anything else, we're going to rip it up in six months. That's called a swinging bust, right? 
Captain never even found out Dad had a swinging bust on him. Because Dad cleaned up his act. He stopped drinking for a while. He stopped drinking until he met my mom, actually. You know, so... That's another story for a different day. But... The captain does not discipline the crew. He's too fucking busy. He has too much going on. We're trying to win a goddamn war. We're over here in Vietnam trying to win a fucking war. What does it look like the captain? Like, okay... These are the places we're going to bomb tomorrow. Here's how we're going to go in. Here's how long we're going to stay here. Here's how, when we leave. That's what the captain's worried about. He's not worried about this dude who got drunk and punched out of fucking orderly. He's not worried about somebody who stole, you know, a little bit of medicine from the sick bay. He don't give a shit. He shouldn't give a shit. He should not be involved. Okay, so what's all this about? You know, this is kind of a long preamble. Why is Reinhold, who's in charge of an entire fucking empire... Why is he interrogating Oscar about some horror that, that you know Oscar has in his in his house? Why? Why is he personally interrogating this man and personally deciding on judgment? Shouldn't that be overseen? Don't you think? Or somebody even beneath uh, over the, somebody who reports to overseen should be the one doing that interrogation? Why is Ryan Hold hard? Why is he personally conducting this? Now there could be an investigation. Somebody interrogates him. You know, the, the whole thing, they had the scene in the hallway where they're talking to everybody, here's the information, and, you know, uh, Wolfgang or whatever his name is, jumps up, redheaded motherfucker, you know what I'm talking about. Or, no, he's blonde, sorry. Uh, there's a lot of redheads on the show. But Wolfgang or whatever his name is, he jumps up, you know, the blonde dude, you know what I'm talking about. Jumps up and gives his defense and Reinhold, her, you know, you've seen it. So, I'm just saying, somebody else could have been doing that, could have reported it to Overseen, and could that Overseen could have reported it to Reinhardt. That's what it is. In other words, you take what would take an hour... And you sum it up in one paragraph that takes 30 seconds to read. Why? Because Reinhardt is, is dealing with an entire fucking empire. He's got Yang out there doing whoever, who knows what the fuck, ready to tear that ass up. You're worried about him. You, you've got people conspiring against you. You're still worried about the fucking emperor and his children, which is the reason why you're worried about the, the concubine, by the way. But still, that, why are you taking a personal interest? You don't have time to spend an hour on this. You only got 15 hours a day you're trying to run an empire. You're going to spend an hour in this interrogation. Especially when you're going to take a couple days to decide. Maybe you have to make a show trial at some point and prove a point to everybody. Then you get personally involved. But you're still going to take two days. You could have gotten this report. It would take you 30 seconds to read. What were your impressions? Okay, this is what I'll think about it. Decide what to do in a couple days. Why is he personally involved? This question, I think, is his downfall. This is why he's going to lose. This is why he will lose power, the Empire will crumble, and it'll probably, by the end, I think the end game of this series, I'm convinced of it now, the end game of this series is we're going to have four or five principalities, four or five territories governed by different people we've been seeing, you know. Uh, maybe Oscar will be in charge of one group of solar systems. Yang will be in charge of another group of solar systems. And Wolfgang, maybe, will be in charge of another group, and then whoever else. Uh, maybe, um, hell, let's throw Julian a bone. Julian's in charge of some, some solar systems. That's what's going to happen. The Empire's going to crumble because he is too worried about everything. He, he, he can't see the forest for the trees. He's too preoccupied with all this random bullshit. One of the last lines in the last episode, he's talking about, uh, yeah, I'm going to devote all my attention to Yang and you know figure out that sol a solution to that. No, you ain't. Dude, you're personally interrogating minions when you could easily delegate that. He's a fucking control freak. It's what he is. It's why he got to the place he was. That's why he's in charge of an entire empire. But that's why he's going to lose the empire. I mean, you, you just can't do it. Like, if a captain of one ship is too fucking busy to punish his own crew, how busy is a person in charge of an entire galactic empire with trillions of people? How busy is he? And he, this is what he's doing with this time. That's how he's spending his time. So, just saying, man. This is a longer than usual preamble, but, you know, I'm back from a hiatus, so I had to get that off my chest. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. This is episode 76. As usual, if you don't remember from before, or it's been a while, I don't know the episode names. I'm not going to say the episode names. It tend to be spoilers, etc. But um, you also have the captions above. And we're going on one. And I get this off high dive. They have a little bumper in front, so that could be an issue. But other than that, we're going on one. Three, two, one. Speaking of Oberstein, or, you know, you know my pronunciation is going to be garbage. Don't even worry about it. It's odd 
that the second in command or uh, minister of intelligence or whatever he is has this much power because he has a lot of power because we also saw in the last episode you know a lot of the lower people are still resent him he made it so a uh, red-headed guy righteous or whatever couldn't have a weapon in the throne room and that's why he was killed so they were they mentioned that again they're bitter about that which means somebody may be coming after overstein pretty soon but it made me think what's interesting about that is like that's more like a Japanese system of government than it is a German system of government. And these are supposedly Germans, you know, kind of based on Germany. Where in the Japanese system of government, you have the right-hand man who has a lot of power. He's like the hand of the king. And typically, in the German system of government, that's not true. Typically, it's the emperor himself has the power. He wields all the power. You know, it all, your buck stops at the top. You don't have the second command making arbitrary ass decisions and then people resent him for it. It's all the one person. Right, Hitler. He he was the end all be all. There was no second. He had he had minions. He had a couple people that are near his level, but the buck stopped with Hitler. Right. Like, let's be real. Where over in Japan, like you had the emperor, but like he had very low power. He's a figurehead. So I'm not saying that, but like they would have a prime minister. The, and Oberstein's kind of like the prime minister, right? Like he has a lot of power. So I just find that interesting. They're purporting to be Germans, but they kind of have a Japanese system of government. Yeah, I'm all right. Cost me a lot of money, though. Oh, shit. In other words, it's garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That happened in Europe. Believe that. There was a lot of military resources wasted on preservation of art. <laughs> yeah. What you trying to say, man? He's a bad motherfucker. The hell is flying ball? <laughs> yeah, they definitely respect. They respect his game. <laughs> yeah, we are exhausted, aren't we? <laughs> It's about our pride, though, of course. What's he got? Like, only like a, a hundred battleships or something? I can't remember. Yep. I shouldn't really be giving you my travel plans, but here we are, right? Sail? We're going to set sail? What are you talking about? Somebody was shitting on the, the translation of the captions. I've been pretty happy with them. Of course, I don't know the source material, so, you know. But there's a couple times you get that anachronistic shit, yeah. We're going to set sail. We're going to sink their ship, you know. Man, you made us all sad. That's not nice. Ominous is a word for it. Yeah, they talk about this in Game of Thrones a lot. The kingdom doesn't feel secure until there's an error. Once there's an error, everybody relaxes, right? It's ridiculous. Like, you could be 20 years old and be king. It's like, well, until you have an error, we're going to be uptight. Because he is pretty young. We don't know his exact age, do we, right? Right. What do you want to say about 25, 30? Yang's probably a few years older, I think. We talked about this before. But he's pretty young for them to be worried about this. But, like, you know, he does go out occasionally to space. So. Yeah, tell us everything. Give me the tea. Aaron Grievous is not a good idea in this kind of government. Just say it, man. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> it don't matter. Drunk or not. This is treason. Yep. Not good. Not good.
take <coughs> care of him. What are you doing with your hand, dude? That's interesting body language he's using there. The religious finesse. We're back to that, huh? Terror, wrist. Terra? I guess it would be Terra, wrist. <laughs> sure, why not? I don't want to be seen with you, scum. Eh, I got minions. I delegate. That's the thing. Just because you can take a an empire, you can forge an empire, let's say, doesn't mean you can manage one. We've seen that many times. The Mingshmiks are the ones who toppled the uh, uh, royalty in Russia, but they're not the ones who ruled. Also, we ain't seen Yang in a while. This is like at least the third straight episode without him, I think. Damn. Why don't you use a Kleenex or you know, handkerchief or something? Jesus, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. Never mind. I guess it don't matter. <laughs> Holy shit. What the hell was that? I forgot how fast things can jump off in this show, man. You have people getting gunned down. You better look fast. Change? I thought we were running right now. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Fair enough. You got to keep up the appearances, right? Damn, they blew that the fuck up, man. Jesus Christ. That feels like a problem. That's right. Is my hair all right? Put some shoes on, dude. They look all nervous and shit. <laughs> what the hell were they doing, man? I guess I'll stay here. Got my little house shoes on. He needs a bedtime uniform so he can just spring out of bed and jump into action, right? You've seen those nightgowns and you know, pajamas that look basically like clothes. Yeah, no shit. That's what we were thinking. Man, that shit's blowing the fuck up. I don't think I've talked about this much, but they don't really have robots, do they? They should. When this was written, I don't think robots were a big deal. Jesus Christ, man. Holy shit. That's some Battle of Blackwater Bay shit right there, man. Wildfire. Stop making your buildings out of gunpowder. That feels like, you know... A smart thing to do. Jesus. I mean, you lost like an entire borough. That feels about right. That feels low. They didn't know how to run away, yeah. Jesus, man, they are crispy critters, man. Yeah, 
this would have been a good time for it. But first, trying to get those LED TVs, man. You got about two hours to go snag you a TV after some shit like that breaks out. Jesus Christ. God damn, that's brutal. Oh, shit. So it wasn't even fucking, uh, wasn't even sabotage. Holy shit, man. That was better than any sabotage. Who are we throwing under the bus? Yeah, sure, that'll do. Yeah, that's right. Get these motherfuckers. <laughs> Zero leniency. Shoot them all. God damn, that's a lot of people though, man. Jesus. Shoot the fuck out of them. Everybody must go. Might as well clear out the uh, the riffraff, right? Jesus. Don't try to run now, motherfucker. You brought an axe to a gunfight. You deserve this L. Lock him up. You know you did it. Man, this is a complete fucking authoritarian regime. Jesus. Uh, slap on the wrist. Right, yeah. So, yeah. Slap on the wrist. Oh, shit. Wait a minute. You're a piece of shit. Oh, fuck. What's with the long pause, dude? Oh, okay. Oh, he was sad there for a minute. This is the kind of delegation you need. Stop worrying about this micromanaging shit on this one fucking planet, motherfucker. And start dealing with the entire empire. Hand to the king. Right? Like I said. I mean, it was obvious, right? That's right. I'm running shit now. Everybody looking at him. <laughs> so. Oh, you're gonna be more doing more micromanage. Is that what you're telling us? Oh, okay. Good. Delegate. Oh, shit. Really? He made her sad. <laughs> oh, she chose that. Okay. Okay, never mind. She made herself sad. Right, right. However. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> We got 35 episodes till that shit happens. I get what you're saying. <laughs> he ain't never been in a knee, bitch. I've been kind of on the fence who I'm supporting. I think I'm firmly in Yang's camp camp now. He's getting a little too Nazi for me. I mean, it was always there, but like, you know, I don't think I wanted to see it. I thought he was better than what he was replacing. He's really not. She 
she's out of here. Yeah, I'm aware of who you're talking about. She's out of there. Hey, man. Sometimes you got to break a few eggs, no pun intended. You should. I thought they were already going to move her out of there. Hell no, man. We got DNA testing if we don't know it. When this is written, we may not know it, but in tech, this future, they have it. So, hell no. Do I look like I care? He's too soft when it comes to her. Just saying. It better be, man. That's what I've been saying this whole fucking day, man. This is what he needs to be focusing on. You asked me goddamn questions. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You asked me damn questions. Mind your own fucking business. That's the second time you begged for my forgiveness. Don't make it three. <laughs> I'd be a terrible dictator. I'd be awful. People would hate me. <laughs> She's big mad. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Yep, we're back to that son of a bitch. Why does it matter if she's beautiful or not? Where, where are you going with that? No oh, shit. Hmm. I mean, it's turning me off. So it is. I see what he's saying. Golden haired brat. I don't know, man. This man's talking a lot of shit. Right, right, right. Oh, shit. Not the demonic. It's not normal temptation. It's a demonic temptation. Speaking of which, you were behind that sabotage, right? She's asking the same thing I'm thinking. Uh-huh. You did it. Why well, you got a lighter in your pocket? <laughs> well, you use a minion. You don't do it yourself, dude. <laughs> That's why I wouldn't like wine, man. Too much of this shit. They got a lot of shit, man. There's a lot of shit happening here. Ew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go to hell. Keep your wine. I fucking spun that wine around for nothing, man. Why was I doing that? I'm not even gonna drink it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't trust anything that bald-headed fuck says. We're out of here. I'm with you so far. Try to use this muffler to replace this redheaded buddy. It ain't gonna work, dude. Yeah, yes. See, I believe that, but I don't no longer believe it. He's always he's a shark. 
he can never stop swimming. He's always going to want another fight, right? Yeah, you can't replace your buddy, dude. Not going to happen. I mean, there's a reason they're cutting to this, right? Like, it's clearly what he's doing. You ain't changed shit. <laughs> well, he's changing for the worse, I guess. Right, 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 right. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. This is making him worse. This right here killed his the good nature, the good side of his nature. That, I mean, that's what happened. Yep. Finally. What's up, man? <laughs> it's about goddamn time you do something. Get off your ass. Oh, wait, but no, though. I keep confusing that dude with Yang, man. That's not Yang. I gotta look for the freckles. Sing that song, motherfucker. I like it when they do this, they hand off, because they're telling two stories here, right? Sometimes three, but at least two, yeah. The good guys and the bad guys, we'll just say. So at the end of an episode that's been all about the bad guys, and they've had several other episodes before that about the bad guys, they will do this. They'll do, I've, they've done this many times so far. They'll end an episode, because it's been several episodes since we've had these guys, they'll end an episode with these guys, and then the next episode we'll start with them. So, I doubt we'll see uh, Ryan Hart, Holder, and any of the other guys next episode. It'd be all about these motherfuckers. What's up, bro? Speak up, I can't hear you. <laughs> Everything's looking good. Something bad's about to happen, but not yet. Interesting. Nice. That's what we're using our time for, huh? We're branding our different companies. I'm going to trademark this one. Oh, shit. Yeah, it seems to be a lot of human energy, that's for sure. A lot of wasting your fucking time. Something bad's about that. Yes, it is. Yep. It was our last good day. He's still trying to smash. Dude, eye on the prize, man. You're fighting a damn war. I like festival pizza. <laughs> well, I think Reinhold heard me. He's going to get his ass away from the micromanaging and to work. So, do that, motherfucker. <laughs> All right. This is episode 77, and we're going on one. Three, two, one. I saw this because um, I was making sure the episode number is correct and it showed when it came out. 2017. I wouldn't have called that. 2017. I really thought this shit had been produced in um, 
I guess about 15, 20 years ago, I guess what I was thinking of. It started a long time ago. Maybe this is like the, the last arc, right? Like, you know, maybe it's, you know, several years in between each story arc or something. Just feels like... Feels more archaic. And I know the original novel is really old, right? But, I mean, wasn't there like a remake that came out recently? Like, if this shit was dropping in 2017, why did they need a remake in, like, uh, 2021, like, four years later? That makes no sense. Very weird. And, of course, you know, it could just be wrong information. Would not be the first time. I am to be notorious about that. fuck you looking at <laughs> it's wild how little screen time those two have shared like actually in the story I think they've met each other twice at the most such a huge impact on each other though I'm taking personal command let Rover take over this is the kind of shit I should be doing that old nonsense Hey, everybody. I suppose you're wondering why I called you here. It's like you, huh? I guess that deserves no answer. <laughs> Give a little head bob or something, man. Dick. What, what are you coming for? Oh, shit. I got it, sir. <laughs> well, that, that's not ominous at all. Oh, I see. Get him the fuck out of here. Yeah, I'll be the judge of that. Well, yeah, the statues have always seemed very garish to me. I mean, you know. I'm not much for all that. Uh huh. Most of that shit happens after the person dies. Except for Rocky. You know, he got his statue while he was still alive. Interesting. And they're coming on that ass. Yeah. I mean, they have nothing else to focus their forces on. Why wouldn't they send everything? Send everything. I don't know how you get out of this, man, if you're Yang. He's always second-guessing him, man. <laughs> he don't know shit about you. He may be a bad motherfucker when it comes to this military shit, but this... Psh. Here's one thing I can tell you for sure. Yang is going to go where you ain't. Believe that. 
You're sending everything here. He's not going to be there. Uh-oh. Can't think of everything. Yeah, I ain't even shaved yet. Fuck him. <sighs> I like his uh, rugged look. I like playing with my Legos. Good buffers got big plans. So anyway, you got my new box of Legos? I got big plans. I like how dismissive that is. That's fine, but whatever. Anyway, we got a thing. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I'm big mad. I mean, he got uh, punished upwards. That's what happened to him. It's starting to come into focus. Consider what was they were talking about a couple episodes ago, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I guess they're going to take Open Sign out. That's what the impression I'm getting. He's out of here. And I mean, you know. Yeah, too much caffeine. Yeah, no shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the okie doke. <laughs> Damn, dude. Just a little joke. You know, gingers have no soul. Yeah, according to Scotland. They're going to take him out, man. He's not getting out of this party. That's what the fuck's happening. This show likes to foreshadow two episodes ahead. They'll set some up, and then two episodes ahead, they, later, two episodes later, they pay it off. That's a lot of what they do there. I like the little... See, that's high-tech for the time, right? Again, though, 2017. Weird. That does not feel like a 2017 show. But they have the big view screen with the different pictures. They had that at Dad's funeral. They were rotating through all his pictures. Not that big, though. 
It's a really big view screen. Oh, shit. Oh, so it's an accident. He just happened to be late. I thought it was on purpose. I thought he's part of it, right? Jesus. Man, I like that dude, man. We literally just met him. I think I would remember his 5 o'clock shadow. This is a big part of the show. Though. I don't really talk about that much. The whole terrorism aspect of it. The secret bombings. It was a big part of Germany, you know. The Nazi government, the muffers are bombing each other. They tried to bomb Hitler, you know. I think it was happening in Japan. I know they they were like stabbing motherfuckers over there. They did politically, you know. Well, they were stabbing for real, but it's for political motivations, right? Typically, they stab people in Japan. In Germany, they blow people up, right? I think a lot of American shows don't really go there very much because we just don't do that here. Like, yeah, you know, we haven't really had that kind of like uh, political interaction within the government. It'd be some fringe moron, you know by himself with a truck. It's not because, like, some senator is mad at a, a congressman or some shit, right? Jesus. Damn, I like that dude, man. He was checking out the view screen. He's like, yeah, that's pretty dope. He never got to finish his Lego city, man. Damn. I thought they were going to take Overside out, man. So it's really going to be about the reaction, not about the attack. It's going to give them a weak spot in their their formation, right? Their deployment. Hell no. Tis, tis but a flesh wound. <laughs> Muffers are mad. Wow. Really? What are you, 12? <laughs> what an asshole. I've never hated anybody that much. I don't even hate my stepfathers. I mean, you know, they're, it's like, you know. Would you hate a wild bear? Yeah, they are what they are. What is that, piss? Why is that yellow? Yeah, a lot. I'm going to be doing a lot. Just saying. You're better off in here in bed. What's up, baby? Like the little head nod he got. <laughs> Just respect. Just like a man misunderstand respect for attraction, right? Oh shit, never mind. She's down to fuck. I didn't misinterpret that look. Minister of Industry is actually a pretty big deal when you're at war. Not that they're technically at war. It's really a civil action, right? Almost a police action, you'd call it. That's what we call it over Vietnam. It's a police action. No fighting for 24 hours. But yeah, like... Especially when it's reconstruction, which is basically the phase of the war they're in. They're in reconstruction. The Minister of Industry is crucial. So they couldn't have lost a worse person. Yeah. A more critical role, right? Yeah, because you're just standing there staring at me. Yeah, I'm sensing you want to say something.
Like, why don't you worry about whatever? What is her? What are her duties, man? Like, what is her specific title? Why don't you worry about that and let me handle the strategy? <laughs> He's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> don't worry. He's going to be plenty of trouble. Well, there's always computer war games. Maybe you should try them out there. It'll kick your ass. Man, you're up my shit too much. This would just make more sense if it was like a meeting with the generals, you know. A couple of them would raise a point. Of course, he wouldn't be that honest with them. He can only be honest with her, so that's her role in this, really. It's not her title, but her role is somebody he can be honest with. <laughs> Micromanaging fuck, man. Like, it's never going to work. He can't hold it. That, it's like uh, Leia said to Darth Vader, the tighter you clutch your fists, the more the systems will slip through your fingers. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. The thought occurred to me. It's all, like I said, it's about the response. It's never about the attack. How they respond is what's the biggest deal. Look at it. They got big plans, don't they? Everybody be talking about the other matter. Yeah, 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 how dare you, you insult me, sir. They're sitting under caves, that can't be comfortable. Uh-huh, that other matter, okay, gotcha. Some scandalous motherfuckers, man. It's like some Game of Thrones shit. This is Game of Thrones in space. I've said this before. Right, right. Say the name. Go ahead. Say the name. Oh, that's it? Oh, these motherfuckers. Maybe you should have fought better. That was a really lame episode. You guys should have you know, been better at fighting back. <laughs> he does have style. We got to admit that, right? Bet you feel badass wearing robes like that. The hoodie and shit. What's up? See, I think that's going to be important. They have so many goddamn enemies. Who knows who did it, right? Like, we know it's a church, but you know, they don't know that. Yep, he was just standing in the wrong place at the wrong time. I love this redhead. Speaking of no soul. Yeah. It's the response.
I don't know about that. She don't seem to know either. Look at it. Man, if he cared about that, he would have never done this shit. So if he gets his own planet, that would be interesting. <laughs> wow, dude. Really? Jesus. Think he's going to fall for that shit? Yeah, I think you're a piece of shit. That's what I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. We got a little bit, a tiny bit of honor. No despicable schemes here, motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. You got to beat him on the field. This is what they wanted anyway, man. They couldn't do it. They got interrupted. You could use a fucking sniper at that rate. That's just, you know, disrespectful. <laughs> Incompetence. Exactly. Look, you could just say no. You don't have to give me this whole fucking diatribe. But, you know, that lets you know never to bring it up again. I think I... I thought he had left the, the fortress. I don't know why I thought he left. And that dude that looked like him with the freckles I thought had was in command is what I thought was going on. We need more varied facial styles here. Yep, I've heard it. What's the devil though? Like we're surely we're not still religious. <laughs> That's always a problem. Believe that. Yeah, we want all the glory for ourselves. He'll tell you to kiss his ass, then what? It takes three seconds to send that message, then you're still waiting. So, you know. Yeah. And then reject it. I'll consider it and then reject it. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, idle minds, right? Why are they bringing that up? I'm suspicious. Right. He just gave me busy work, essentially. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. They love to bait the hook, don't they? The wind blows toward the corner. I actually like that title. You know, I come from a war game background. And the goal in a war game is just to destroy your enemy. Now, sometimes you want to occupy a certain city. You, if you take Berlin, the Nazi regime falls. You know, if you take... Uh, well, I think uh, World War Two is like what I mostly focus on with war games and stuff. But, like, say you take... I'm trying to figure out how you defeat Japan. Because, you know, they had to, I guess, get close enough to new two cities or something. Or you have to achieve certain... A certain number of victory points, which represents... It's an intrinsic uh, mechanic that represents, you know, the, the whole political landscape, essentially. Which is kind of what I'm going to be talking about here in a minute. It's more complicated. Because you, know, you don't actually take Tokyo, you know, uh, to defeat Japan in most of these war games. You just have to create a certain set of conditions and then they surrender. Germany was easy. You just take Berlin. Because that's what happened in real life, Right. So anyway, so like, you know, but basically, especially when you get smaller, like squad leader or stuff like that, 
you got to destroy the enemy. You eliminate all the enemy's units, and then you win. You know, essentially. You can win chess by just checkmating him really early because he doesn't have anywhere to go, or you can take all his fucking pieces. The only thing that's left is king, and then you can checkmate. You, you can win either way, right? But like, so you either take the capital or you destroy the enemy. So that's kind of you know, growing up. I just saw that's what war is. War is you destroy the enemy. You got to defeat all their military units on the field, right? Shoot all the planes out of the sky, sink all their boats, destroy all their army battalions, you know, divisions, whatever. But what I failed to realize, and I should have realized this because I grew up in the aftermath. I was, I don't remember the Vietnam War. I was too young. Hell, I think, I guess I was born before it ended, I suppose. But, like, I was really fucking young. I just remember the aftermath. I remember seeing the homeless people with the military jackets on and, you know, Vietnam vet. And, of course, Dad was a Vietnam vet, you know, from the Navy. But there was never a more political war than Vietnam. And, see, that's the thing. That's why I never understood Vietnam, Vietnam growing up. I never, I didn't understand why didn't we win. Why didn't we win? We had better people. We had better equipment. We had better technology. You know, why didn't we win, you know? Because war is just an extension of politics. It took me a long time to, for this to sink into my head. You can hear the phrase war is an extension of politics, but you don't really think about it. It doesn't really sink in. At least it did for me. You know, so it's, you're just trying to achieve some political goal. We want to be able to make the decisions in this region. We want all the cows. We want your gold. We want your women. Whatever. You know, like you know, there's something you have. You have oil. You have steel, you know, iron, whatever. Like, you know, you're in our way. We're trying to get over there, and your country is between us and there. So we're taking you over. Like, there's a political goal here. We want something. You have it. So you won't let us have it. So we're going to take it, is essentially, you know. Which, you know, it's hard for us to conceptualize, you know, violence on that scale because here's the thing. When you're violent one-to-one, -one, when you're a person and you're violent, you can be violent for a lot of reasons. You may not have any particular goal. Maybe you're just in a bad mood and you want to punish somebody. Maybe you want to be punished. Maybe you're starving and they got some bread and so you just want to take it. Now, that would be similar to what I'm talking about between nations. You want something, they have it, right? Maybe it's just revenge. You know, maybe it's just like, you know, they did something to someone you love, so now you're going to hurt them. Maybe you're just crazy. Maybe it's a case of mistaken identity. You know, like, you don't have, like, a case of mistaken identity in war. Like, oh, sorry, Denmark. We thought you were Sweden, but we attacked you by mistake. Sorry, man. Yeah, my bad. You don't have that war. So there's so many motivations for violence on a one-to-one -one level that don't scale up to violence between nations. That's why it's hard to conceptualize this. There is no, maybe very, very rarely you can have revenge be a motive in, in war between nations. Not even that Hitler pretended there was a revenge, but he just wanted power. It wasn't about getting revenge on you know World War One. Like it was just it, it was an excuse. So it's hard for us to scale up motivations for violence up to a national level, right? It's just hard to it's hard to conceptualize it. So like war is simply a means to an end. And I always thought it was the end result of itself. You know? So where that's really important is to understand. This battle that we're seeing, like they're 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 prepping us for that that is, uh, we assume is going to happen here. It's not about destroying the units on the field, and I think Reinhold has like he's forgotten that war is politics. It's just politics. He's forgotten that, and he has people that don't like what's happening. He has people in high ranks of his military who don't like what's going on right now. They're, they're pissed off and overseen. They don't like some of these arbitrary decisions that he's made. It's a good thing he was leaning with Oscar because I have a feeling that Oscar is kind of well liked among the other people, so that would have made things worse. But the Fazan district, you know, they were taken over. They're not happy. Obviously, the Alliance is not happy. You know, those people in those home worlds. So Yang doesn't have to win on the field. He just has to win the political battle because that the what's happening on the field is the political battle. He just has to hold out for a long time. Or he, you know, taking the, the fortress was already a big political move. It makes, you know, the empire look really bad. So what if you pull everything out, you go over and you take Fazan? Like, I think that's what's actually going to happen. I think they, they keep going to get back to Fazan. They keep bringing it up. 
Why do they keep bringing it like, You have the explosion. You have the terrorism. You know? Why do they keep bringing this up? And why, you know, why does this one-week delay leaving matter? Like, why was that emphasized? I think Yang's going to pull out of the fortress, go over, and take Fazan. And then when the Empire comes out, he'll pull out of there and go over and take something else. Maybe eventually take the, the, the capital planet of the, uh, the, the Empire. He just has to score political victories. That's all the South was trying to do in the Civil War. They knew they could never win on the field. They're trying to score enough political victories that Europe's like, all right, let's side. Because you know, Europe did not want to side with the South and then the South loses. Then they got to deal with the North. Then they got to deal with the United States pissed off. And we have to probably you know pay them off and bribe them. They didn't want to get into all that. They have their own problems over there in Europe. So Europe is probably never going to get involved unless something dramatic happened. Like, for instance, the South took Washington, D.C. Yeah, Battle of Gettysburg was about all that. Like, you know, they just, they had to score the... It would have been easy for the South to just sit back on their asses, and they would have, could have dragged the war out for 10, 15 years. But the reason they took the initiative, the reason they were they were attacking, which was a bad idea, given the, you know, the military realities of the, of the day, you, know, you, you had much better advantages when you're playing defense. They did that because they were trying to get the, the, the Europe involved. It was, it was a political game. They were trying to win the political battle. They, they didn't care about the battle on the field. The battle on the field was just a means to an end to win the political battle. So that's where Yang's at here. He just has to stay existent. He has to not get trapped into a fight that he loses. He has to not die. But he also has to be scored in victories. So he, I don't think he could sit in the fortress. Like the way they've talked about things and how they put this out there, I don't think he just could sit there in the fortress and wait him out and win, right? Because I think they would eventually take it over. So... That's why I think he's going to abandon it. But if say he could, say he could just take it forever, just stay there forever. I don't know that'd be enough to win the political battle. So that's the thing. That's and I think the Reinhardt is so because he keeps talking about he wants to win on the field, you know, and that's what he wants. We know that's what he wants. He wants to win. You know, my fleet against your fleet. Talk about oh, give him some more fleets so he wins. He doesn't need more fleets. He just needs to be smarter than you and win the political game. And eventually, there's going to be revolts and you know, there's going to be unrest. And, you know, Reinhold won't be like, you know, at home taking care of business or you know, creating his new empire. Like you said, nothing can start with his empire until Yang's defeated. Well, what if Yang holds out for years? That's how Yang can win. So that's what I think is happening here. That's what Yang has to do, right? So, like, you got to keep in mind... It's so hard not it's so hard not to get lost in the sauce. Like, ooh, these battleships are fighting each other. They're shooting each other. Oh my god, you lost six battleships, we lost three. It's so easy to get wrapped up in that. Okay, you lost three, we lost six, so I guess you lost you won this battle. Maybe, maybe not, you know? Depends on which ones. And it depends on what what transpired after that, right? Like so it's just it's so easy to get lost in that and not realize we're playing a much larger political game here. So as long as Zhang's alive, he's a fucking problem. Whatever the size of his military force. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. This is episode 78. Then we're going on one. Three, two, one. I never remember there's an opening theme song. I could be talking some of this over, you know? But it's hard, like, you know, like, could I contain myself to 45 seconds? I seriously doubt it. Or however long it is, right? I either say very little or say too much. But it's wild, though, you know, it's like, the more he wins, the more he sets himself up to lose, in my opinion. And the thing is, too, he's in an echo chamber. My deal is, like, you need to gather as many opinions as possible. You're not going to take the opinions. You're not going to always follow the people's advice. But you need to hear these opinions. You need opinions that people are not afraid to tell you that, like, this, look, you're fucking up. This is a mistake. 
you should do this. And that's very valuable to me. It should be valuable to him. It's valuable to any, any good leader, any good manager, because here's the thing. They say you, it makes you examine the reasons why you're doing something, okay? You're making a mistake. This is wrong. Then you examine it, and maybe you're still going to do it, but at least you examine why you're doing it. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> oh, really? You writing a blog? Yeah, <laughs> get off my ass. <laughs> Quit looking over my shoulder, motherfucker. But it's very valuable. You need somebody to like make you examine your motivations or you just do things without examining them. And Ryan Hard has nobody making him examine why he's doing these things. He just decides, and then that's it. He doesn't ever think about it again. This is what we're going to do. He never thinks about it again. He should do that. That's the problem with just having yes men around you. You need people to challenge you. <laughs> I like that, man. <laughs> this guy cracks me up. Yeah, that's a problem. Oh, man. You're bringing me down. Let's go drink. <laughs> yeah. That's a... He was about to cuss him out. That's a real word, asshole. Yeah. Nice suit, man. Nice tie. Yeah, put your sandwich down. It's unprofessional. I'm still the greatest commander, bitch. Yeah, warning. You're hurting our feelings. Tactically unsound and strategic. I like. I, I wish I could go back. I like how he phrased it. Some semblance of pride, man. Dude, you're talking too much shit. Man, fuck off. Oh, you'll get a rational response, all right. Yeah, <laughs> tell him to kiss your ass. Yeah, he's really, he's being very aggro in the way he phrased everything. Yeah, <laughs> what's up? Yep. Yeah. I like that little bitchy ass thought he just had. Hilarious. Yep. His blog is terrible. I've read it. He's bored. But a minion, they sent a minion, and that piece of shit is specifically. Right, right. But for his holding grudges, man. Yeah, but these idiots. Right, right. You know the answer. It's a diversion, but really it's for him. Hmm. Tell him, eat my... Nuts. Just send the word nuts. We all remember the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, because it's just about the battle on the field, of course. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I ain't choosing shit. <laughs> That's an interesting strategy, actually, if you look at it from their point of view. Right. That's an interesting plan. He'll probably see through it, but it is interesting. 
Oh, right, 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 right. Now we're going to turn our back on him. I see. I totally see what you're saying. Yeah, that's you can't do that. It's politically untenable. Yeah. Then why bring up the other reasons? If that's the only thing you care about is detestable behavior. Sounds like you got five excuses, motherfucker. Yeah. It's about his feelings. <laughs> Probably a good plan, I guess. Lovely. Feigned defeat, huh? He will definitely go blind with triumph. We've seen that before. <laughs> what are you going to do, dude? I don't think you can hold the force. I think you need to bug out. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Get him to act before the Emperor gets there. Interesting. Right, right, right. Just got to hold out long enough, I guess. I don't know, man. I see what you're saying, though. Plus, Dipper, he wants a fight, man. He's not going to be happy until he gets one. Yeah, <laughs> he'll be big mad. <laughs> Yeah, it's not about my honor. You know he loves you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. I've always kind of felt the same way. I, I feel exactly this way. I've never really vocalized it in that way, but that's exactly how I feel. I think it's all crap, man. We have free will. Right, right. He's my favorite character. I like where he's coming from. He'll take care of business if he has to, you know, militarily. But it's not his first inclination. Right, right. But you, you're going to be severely punished. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> I mean, you have to execute him, right? Like, if you capture Yang, you have to execute him. It just has to be done. You, you can't, can't let that go down like that, right? Oh, shit, dude. Jesus. That wall was big as fuck, man. How'd you miss it? How could you possibly miss that wall? I mean, you know, she didn't miss it. She hit it. I mean, like, with her eyes. Like, how could she not see it? Damn, that sounded aggro as a motherfucker. <laughs> Why 
why the hell are we having this conversation? <laughs> Kick his ass. That's right. Hey, you started it. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm not typically in that schoolyard you started this shit, but she did start it. The fuck, man. Well, shit. I'm assuming Julie is the end game of the series because, man, does he get a lot of screen time. Yang will probably die at a sacrifice, right? If we're talking about end games here. Maybe him and Ryan Holderhard will die together. Julian's the one who carries on. Man, motherfucker, eat the entire slice of cake in three bites. You fucking wolf. Look at me. That's what I'm saying, man. That dude, he housed an entire fucking slice of cake. A big-ass slice of cake in like two or three bites. Dude. Motherfucker has a fire hose for a throat. Yeah, it is what it is. Man, we can point whatever we want, motherfucker. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, you're scum. God damn, boy. I called that shit. Jesus. Big mad. <laughs> I see. I understand completely. <laughs> You're old as motherfucker. The thing is, considering the level of technology, you know, he's, you can easily have nutrition. In most cases, we've seen food issues somewhere. In doofus. They should have a life expectancy of at least 100. They should average 100 years old at this point with this level of technology. Even with all the war, right? Which would mean middle age is 50. I like our rectangular, I guess it'd be square. I like our square shaped cups. I mean, a square is a rectangle, but you know what I mean. Jesus, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they heard that shit. They're going to see you in the bathroom later, motherfucker. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know if you want to poke that bear. No, nah, man, but see, what happens after you lose, though? What happens to you when you're a prisoner? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, the way you get treated after they capture you, assuming, you know, if you die, it doesn't matter, right? But the way they get treated, treat your men, maybe people you care about, a lot of what will determine that will be how you act right now. Like, you know, how much of an asshole you are. Oh, shit. Yep, yeah, that's me after Taco Bell. Told you to close the bathroom door. <laughs> Are you crunk? 
Dude, that was loud as fuck. You're not sorry. Dude, there's a screaming room down the road, man. Here in the middle of the night is not the place. I mean, dude, you woke up the dead. Everybody's awake. <laughs> you got damn right. Mm. The best thing he's ever said. <laughs> Can be able to hold your drink, motherfucker. It all goes to shit. Even if he's cool now, he goes to shit later if you're an autocrat. Yeah, I'm not surprised. He's a fucking idiot. I thought you were giving romantic advice. What the hell is this? Yeah, typically. Really? Dude, I don't know. I think you're in your own head too much. Yeah. A lot of it is your fears are completely unrealistic. Well, that's a pleasant fantasy. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. That's one of the things about becoming an adult. You realize the other adults are just like you. When I was 10, I thought my mom was a genius. Once I got to the age she was when I was 10, I realized I was just a fucking idiot. I didn't have a clue. Oh, shit. Dude, what are you implying here? Are you implying what I was implying? That Yo Yang's gonna die? Damn, man. The way that I dropped was sad. Fuck that. Fuck peace. They're going to assassinate him, aren't they? Turn him into a martyr. That's exactly what the fuck they're going to do. Wow. Jesus. Look at him. They got him gassed up. Look at him, man. He's digging this. I like his evil eyes. Geek him up. <laughs> I'm a bad motherfucker. Just me. I hate that guy. <laughs> That's right. It's ass saying this fucking sweet ass robe is easy. <laughs> right. That's what they seem to be foreshadowing, anyway. Really. Not every time, though. <laughs> wow. Not cool. Yeah, I bet it was too vulgar. Jesus, dude. He just wrote nuts. That's it. Dude, what'd you say? 
<laughs> Stop there. You know, we can't send that. Holy shit. I guess I want to provoke him into attacking early, right? <laughs> wow. Jesus. <laughs> that's what you want. Yep, that's exactly what you want. He's going to jump in too early and get his ass kicked. Hey, man, it's what it needs to be. You shouldn't gain gauge refinement based on your standards. Right. Yeah, I think it will definitely have an effect. Well, what's the worst thing that could happen? You can get treated like shit after they capture you, I guess, but, you yeah. know. The chances of you uh, goading him into something is pretty good. So I would do it. Yeah, but what about our very expensive tricks? <laughs> Let's bicker. I got something to say. A little bit, anyway. And this is where that delay from the Fazan fleet matters. Why did it matter they were weak delayed? This right here. This is why. Right. Interesting. Makes sense. Oh, shit. <laughs> it is underhanded, isn't it? <laughs> Be sure to give it back. <laughs> Nuts. Lovely. I've had two long intros in this video, so I'm going to cut this off here. I'll just... The thoughts on this will be in my next intro.